Hello everyone, this is Pal Pond Raw Weather. In this update, we've got a parade of storms sending very heavy rainfall as the heat will continue out west, plus we'll have a major hurricane developing and a possible gulf surprise. Welcome back everyone, how are you doing? Hope everyone enjoyed their holiday extended weekend. This is your morning update, so I appreciate all my followers out there and the new followers. Uh, if you do like detailed weather breakdowns on North America and the tropics, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all my daily updates to keep you ahead of the storm. So let's take a look at the North American water vapor imagery this morning. And here's the setup. We've got what they call more or less a zonal flow. That's very dry flow coming off, off the west. We do have some milkiness up here into portions of Idaho and Montana. That's actually going to set the stage for possibly stronger thunderstorms. We also have this swirl of low pressure setting up over portions of Indiana and Ohio. That sets up the axis where we've had extremely heavy rainfall yesterday in portions of the Northeast. They'll adding to those rainfall totals today. While here, up here in Texas, we still have what they call a cold pocket aloft. This upper level low, it's clear skies, but once you start heating up the atmosphere, it kind of mixes in with that cold air aloft, and you could be setting up for more isolated pop-up thunderstorms in the heat of the afternoon. Those will be indicative of some downburst winds and some small hail, as most of the access of the instability will be further down into Rio Grande, but we'll have all that this will be shifting off into the east over the coming days as Texas will start to dry out. But plus we have Hurricane K that we're going to have to be dealing with down here by the Baja of California. So there's a lot happening. And of course, we've got Danielle, but that's moving out to sea. And then we've got K. I'm not sorry. We have uh, Earl as well. And that's actually <laughs> moving out to sea. So there's a lot of moving parts here, but we're going to break everything down for you in this uh, updated video. So let's take a look at the overall setup yesterday. Wow, we had some very heavy rainfall setting up over the Northeast. This looked to be an extreme event. And yes, yeah, some of these areas did in fact pick up, especially places like Connecticut, especially into Rhode Island, where they've had that ex severe and extreme drought, but it came fast, too fast, too soon. And portions of, look at the chart on the right hand corner of the screen. This is over a 24 hour period. Of course, not everybody saw these amounts, but these areas in Connecticut easily picked up six plus inches of rain and in portions of Rhode Island where they had a lot of high water rescues yesterday. Interstate 95 was closed down in both directions in parts where it dumped easily six, eight, if upwards to 10 inches in spots. And they're actually still dealing with that flooding rains. And it wasn't for everybody. I mean, notice Long Island, there's, there's areas that barely saw anything, right? So this is typically what you get with these training cells that typically just kind of run over the same exact places, dumping very copious rain amounts. But that axis, I think, is going to shift a little bit further south today. So that sets up places like where you messed out on some of the bigger rains today or yesterday. I think you'll be getting that uh, for today uh, you know, going forward. So, But out west, man, it's just all about the heat, right? They've been dealing with that heat of well above average temperatures. Like, for example, Sa Sacramento hit 114 yesterday. Their average high is 90, folks. That's certainly not normal. That's 24 degrees above average. So that ridge of high pressure is really locked over that region. And they're going to be extending some of those record high temperatures. This is what's updated from the National Weather Service and all these areas in the box here. That's where they're expecting uh, records to break this afternoon and that's just today it'll go on to tomorrow and I do feel the ridge will finally break down as we go towards the end of the week but for today here's the setup so back behind it we've got severe clear under that ridge of high pressure there's not much of anything for a good chunk of the country as they're locked under that ridge of high pressure but all the way to the south that's where they're having all the unsettled weather out here out of the Ohio Valley and the, off the East Coast. So again, where that little vorticity is on the right side, that's where we have those heavy thunderstorms. You're going to be breaking out into portions of Kentucky again, getting into Ohio, and then there's the access across the Northeast, northern parts of Jersey. I think, I think in fact, Long Island does get hit with this particular setup this afternoon. Then going into portions of Pennsylvania headed into New York. So a lot of some of the areas that got hit yesterday will be impacted today 
adding to those totals with that heavier rainfall. And then the access with this little cold pool aloft will be basically from Dallas eastward and then points southward into Texas. And then all the way in across the deep south and much of the southeast will be hit with those kind of diurnal heating type thunderstorms in the heat of the afternoon. So if we break things down for you over the next 48 hours, so here's the overall setup. So we got that cold pull off. A lot of this instability in East Texas and Southern portions of Texas are going to be that diurnal heating type atmospheres so between three and eight o'clock. The, the atmosphere heats up into the lower 90s and boom, you've got that cold air aloft, mix it in with that. And that sets the stage for pop up thunderstorms. And then they create an outflow boundary, which overspreads and, and, and it makes the you know creates more thunderstorms in that environment but really it's all about uh you know the pop-up showers with the daytime heating thunderstorms down here in the southeast and of course right along that boundary there we're still going to be having to deal with those heavier rain showers and th stronger thunderstorms if not flooding rains in this region again while up here, while I showed you some of that milkiness and the water vapor imagery, we could be having some fairly intense storms because it's going to be just so hot in this atmosphere. It's finally going to bubble up in the heat of the afternoon in places where they do have that mixed in some of the moisture in the upper levels of the atmosphere. Places in the central Idaho and then portions of Montana, they could be looking at some severe thunderstorms uh, going into the afternoon hours with some of those downburst winds and what they call would microburst and these types of setups so going forward looking at the wind index you can actually see as these pop up we could be looking at some stronger downburst microburst type winds as the air rushes out of the thunderstorm yes yeah, 60 70 hey even upwards to possibly 80 miles an hour could be impacting a good portions of montana with those storms but Everywhere else, you can definitely see down here further south, again, this is what they've seen the past couple of days in just isolated spots. You can actually see it again. The main access is in East Texas and Southeast Texas. But again, you can't roll out as these storms pop up, could be producing some microburst winds as they do collapse. Uh, so definitely be on high alert for some of that activity. Again, the three to eight o'clock time frame. but you can see off the coast here, Look at that eye, folks. That is K. That is now Hurricane K, expected to be a major hurricane traversing up the, up the Baja. But what's interesting, this is a subtle feature, and it could be a surprise in the Gulf of Mexico. I talked about we always have to look out for tail end to fronts, right? So as this front, this old frontal boundary will be sagging into the Gulf of Mexico, these waters off the coast here upwards to 90 degrees southwest tail right so here's a low pressure possibly on friday developing on the southwest side of a stalled frontal boundary so there are hints that this actually could start to develop in possibly something tropical so we are in a setup right now where this low pressure is going to be hanging off the coast for about two days so it has a small window to develop into a tropical feature named or not if it does get named it will be named fiona but it'll stand very heavy rainfall especially in the portions of florida as you see k is off the coast of the baja so here's the here's the setup so i think here's the latest icon the icon's been hinting at this for literally actually the last couple of days on this sagging front a low pressure center of a thousand four millibar whether it's tropical or not it's going to be sending very heavy rain into portions of the the, the the florida panhandle and again right front quadrant east side loaded dirty side the access would be the heaviest instability and the highest rain amounts would be essentially to the right side of this low pressure center as we're watching k come up the coast of the baja and then there's a cold front that's going to be diving southward throughout the weekend so but here's the overall setup in the atlantic so i wanted to highlight this a little bit i'm not going to spend too much time on it because we got danielle that's a hurricane but it's moving well out into the open waters we've got earl it's a tropical storm but it's expected to be a hurricane pass just to the right of bermuda they're on the safer side which would be I don't think they're going to be actually getting much impacts on to Bermuda, but once it passes into these waters, very conducive development, I think it's going to actually be a major hurricane by then, as we'll, all eyes will start to turn to 
these features down here we've got this orange 60 percent probability and this yellow that just popped up coming off the coast of africa about 20 or 30 percent we are in peak hurricane season now so we watch everything that comes out of the tropics so now let's turn our attention to the on the pacific side because this is what is now hurricane k that is expected again rapidly intensify and now on the national weather hurricane center uh, gonna be a possible major hurricane as early as 36 hours from now right off the coast of Cabo San Lucas you can actually see they've already got tropical storm warnings these will probably you know possibly even switch over to possibly hurricane warnings or they'll get the right side of this system with some heavier rain bands and some higher winds but this traverses up the coastline and you can see it actually gets fairly close to the state of California and southern California and that will be sending some much needed rain for, for that region. So let's zoom in to the 3D model because here's the overall hurricane model and this drops it down to a 965 millibar uh, you know, hurricane just right off the coast of Cabo San Lucas. So they're gonna be a fairly high, high impact event from, the, from this particular system. And we could be looking at some significant waves offshore. So here's here's uh, here's basically Earl going to be hanging out in the, over over the open waters. But down here we got K. Those are pretty high wave amounts, up to 50 foot swells coming off the coast there. So it's going to be packing a punch with some of the very high waves uh, in its wake as it continues to verse up the coastline there. But let's zoom into Saturday because I think that's when things get interesting. We do have that little feature in the Gulf of Mexico. I think it'll be either offshore by then or entering portions of the southeast. Whether it has time to develop or not, it really doesn't change the impact because it would be a small, minimal tropical storm. But it's going to be sending very heavy rain into portions of Florida and impacting Alabama into Georgia. And that will swing up into the Carolinas going into uh, North Carolina and Virginia as we've got rain heading, you know, 993 millibar low pressure. This would be still a tropical storm by then hanging off the coast sending heavier rain amounts into Southern California while we have that cold front entering the midsection of the country and that'll be driving dropping southward. So as we go into Sunday, you can see the accesses of this cold front. It doesn't have much moisture to contend with, but it does have a little bit as it'll be dropping some, some, uh, some rain along, along in its way, but Really, a lot of the instability will be in, will be where that low pressure center comes in off the coast of the Gulf of Mexico into the southeast. And then we'll be watching the movement of K dumping some heavier rains into Southern California. And you can really see it on this the 700 millibar humidity index all the green areas that's where all the, the the unsettled weather that's where all the rain will be and then all the the all the brown shaded areas that's the drier air so right so we got this low pressure coming in right right side loaded all the darker greens are the highest instability rain amounts on this side with this low pressure center we've got high pressure locked over the northeast that's going to keep Earl at bay and keep it well offshore, right? As we're watching K sending heavier rain amounts into portions of Southern California and portions that will actually activate the monsoon again and entering portions of Arizona and New Mexico will help amplify the monsoon region where they had a lull as of late. So here's the cold front, right? So as we get into Sunday, we do watch that feature, these below average anomalies, we finally get a reprieve from the heat. So as this, as K comes in, we'll mix in with some of that cold air air, and then we'll be looking at some cooler conditions for portions of Colorado, I mean, uh, sorry, California, as well as in Nevada here, as we'll watch in that cooler pool of air, not cold, but cooler pool, you know, probably temperatures in the 80s down here instead of the 90s, right? So, so let's look at the setup because this is one of my main concerns too. So as the access of K moves actually out of out in the open waters, that's going to be setting up a lot of lightning on the interior regions. And this air has been very dry, so we had a lot of dry vegetation. So yeah, we could be looking at with the with the down sloping wind coming off the Sierras. We could be looking at some not only some lightning strikes, but that could set the stage for additional wildfires 
uh, in this region as well. So that's definitely one of my concerns with this particular system of K coming in on the access where it is as it fishtails out in the open waters that creates the downsloping wind off the Sierras could activate in more of a higher wind gust and then then setting up some lightning and that's a, not a good combination with the wildfire so here's some here's some preliminary wind gusts i think these wind gusts are going to be a little bit higher as we get closer to the event but we could be looking at some tropical storm wind gust right here off the uh, south uh, you know, portions of southern uh, california here but here's the overall summary right so we've got that ridge of high pressure still locked over california we're still going to be looking at those record high temperatures and spots for several more days to come we've got that heavier rain moving in uh, portions on the 9th the 10th and the 11th and this ridge will slowly start to shift in the midsection of the country so so then then we have also that instability where that heavier rain amounts will be coming in with that low pressure center off louisiana the mississippi and alabama getting into georgia the florida panhandle as well as in portions of the tennessee valley with some heavier rains and to sum it all up over the next seven to ten days there's the higher you know precipitation anomalies coming in for southern california we still got the northern side on the drier side and then we have that monsoonal flow coming back i think texas after they deal with today and tomorrow with some diurnal heating thunderstorms i think they're going to be starting to dry out after they've been wet for several weeks over the past several weeks and especially of Cal uh, oklahoma here too and there's the access of what these little fronts are going to be coming through some higher higher rain amounts into portions of minnesota and wisconsin but really the instability is going to be further south with that low pressure center that's going to be coming up uh, in combination of what's happening today with uh, portions of the northeast this area could be in for some heavier rainfall over the next seven days so i appreciate you guys uh, watching do like this video definitely leave your comments below and don't forget to subscribe to my channel to catch the latest update while i protect you before and after the storm